Welcome to Fitz Dog Radio. I sit before you a man who has run a marathon in the last week. I swear to God, I am so fucking fried. Not that I don't have a little extra for this intro, because I do, because I'm excited. It's my boy Pete Holmes on the show today. He's got a new special out called I Am Not For Everyone that I highly recommend. It's great. Um, But I just recorded two Sunday Papers episodes, an hour and a half each, back to back. I edited. (laughs) I ran. I was out late last night for my birthday till three in the morning shooting pool with Dion Curry and uh, another guy. And uh, anyway, I, I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 530 in the morning for Mazatlan in Mexico to watch the eclipse or watch what it looks like based on the weather report that I am going to be watching the clouds underneath an eclipse after traveling from another country. But I don't, I could really give a shit. The key is we're going to be in Mexico for six days. I'm going to see my son for the first time in five months, four or five months. I can't remember. And we're going to uh, have some fun in the sun. I'm going to let loose. I don't drink, but I'm going to, that doesn't mean I can't party. I don't smoke pop, but that doesn't mean I can't get high on life. I'm married, but that doesn't mean I can't have sex with my wife. Maybe, depending on how many people are staying in the Airbnb. We got a big Airbnb, and I don't know who's staying there and who's not. It's all going to be loose. We're going we're gonna to roll. Um, so I just, I'm in Tampa right now. I got my final shows tonight. I was in Miami. I was in Boca Raton. I saw my mom. She's doing good. She had heart surgery, but now she's uh, back to her spry self, doing good. I played pickleball with my friend, my friend uh, Tom, the billionaire, and Alex. We played pickleball. It was it was two on two, and we played with a guy who was maybe 147 years old, and he got he got heat exhaustion, and we had to stop after about five or six games. And it really was like, why play that sport if you can't make it through a set of pickleball? I mean, it's it's the easiest sport. There's almost no effort. And, you know, as if you're a tennis player, just play tennis. Pickleball is for old ladies. And they're trying to take over the courts in Venice Beach, and it's not going to happen. Nobody's, nobody's allowing it to happen. I, I could, well, whatever. It's the WNBA of racket sports. You can't even say that anymore because now the WNBA is going to be good next year. You're going to have Caitlin Clark and uh, who's the woman from LSU. She's going to be there. Who knows? Maybe it'll catch on. Maybe this is like the year. Everybody always said when I moved to LA, oh yeah, downtown. That's the new hotspot. And then you go downtown and somebody would piss on your leg and steal your car. And you'd be like, I don't think we're there yet. Um, And it's still like that, but it also is a place where there are $20 million apartments and hot nightclubs and restaurants, and it's kind of finally arrived in the last couple of years. I won't go there. I don't like to go there. I very rarely do. Um, but it was nice. I was in Boca, did a show. For, my mom was in the crowd. I got a standing ovation, which feels really nice when your mom is out there. And she's elderly and she's wondering if you're doing okay in your career. Who cares that the theater was half empty? I got a standing ovation. That's that's the important thing. And I was so happy to see her. She's just, I was always so proud to introduce her to my friends. She's just she's a fun, good person. And she had a couple friends with her. And there was a girl from high school that I'd had sex with. There was uh, a guy who I had caddied for when I was young who kept grabbing the sides of my head and kissing my forehead over and over again, he's Italian. Any other race, you don't put up with that shit. If this guy's Italian, you can let a, he'll kiss you right on the lips. He'll lick your ear and he'll be like, all right, I guess it's a cultural thing. But say if a, um, a Mexican guy did that, you'd be like, Hey, 
Um, what else? Oh yeah, Tampa Bay is crazy. There is, it is a very sexual town. There's been a lot of, I've been doing this bit about kinky people and I asked the crowd if anybody's kinky and I would say a third of the crowd claps and then I get stories and I'm talking like people sit in the front row talking about how they get tied up and have, have their girlfriend put on a dildo and ram it up their ass. And I mean, crazy stories. And the guy that is featuring for me, uh, now I can't tell the story cause I already said his name, but I mean, crazy stuff happens down here and I can't even begin to tap into it. Uh, one, one, one drunk, this guy flew in from Pennsylvania for the show and then he sat there in the second row and just kept screaming happy birthday at me. Like every, he'd like nod, he would nod off and then he'd come awake and he'd wish me a happy birthday again in the middle of a bit and I'd have to start all over again throughout the entire show. There was a gun owner who was threatening me with his eyes. It was intense. It's just a, it's a weird fucking state. I drove through what they call Alligator Alley, which connects the East Coast to the West Coast. And uh, you drove through nothing but mangroves and, and the Everglades for like two and a half hours straight. And uh, three hours. And, uh, and then I get, I dropped the car. I rented a car in Miami, dropped it at the Tampa Bay airport. Get to the Tampa Bay airport. I'm so exhausted. It took six hours to drive. I thought it was going to be three and a half and I'm now late for my show. I drop the car off at Enterprise. I go upstairs. And to get to where you pick up an Uber, you have to walk, you have to go up an elevator, walk across a thing, down another elevator, walk across a bridge. It's impossible. So I finally get there. I order my car. I wait 15 minutes. As the car is two minutes away, I reach in my pocket and I realize I have the fob the key for the rent a car in my pocket now i'm not coming back to the fucking airport and i'm not getting charged 400 dollars for the key fob. so i cancel the car there's 40 bucks and then i run all the way back to enterprise which takes 15 minutes each way and now i'm really late and there's traffic and i get in and i do it's just been ever since i got here it's i swear to god it's been non-stop action and now this is it i just got to do this intro i got to bring up my good friend talk about pete in a second but also if you want to come see me at irvine i'll be at the improv april 18th through the 20th mamaronic new york emelin theater may 31st austin texas at the mothership june 7th through 9 pittsburgh uh june 21st all tickets at fitzdog.com all right what can I say about this guy? He was my boss. I wrote for him on his TV show, Crashing, for a few seasons. And I'd known him for years before that. Just a really good comic, good dude, very smart. One of the smartest people I know. He had a show called You Made... He has a podcast called You Made It Weird. He had his own show, The Pete Holmes Show. Uh, he's had a bunch of specials. but uh, And he had a sitcom last year called How We Roll, which was on CBS. But I uh, really highly recommend the, the, the special... I'm not for everyone. Check it out. And here's my talk. This is going to be a two-parter because we recorded and it just kept going. We just kind of couldn't stop talking. And so I decided to split it up into two one-hour uh, podcasts. And I hope you enjoy them as much as I did recording them. Here is my friend, Pete Holmes. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the podcast, the great. Pinky in the small part of the eye. That's a power move at the beginning of a podcast. It's like a signal. You know what I don't like? Have I we ever joked about interesting acting? What's that? When you watch like some of the greats do it great. Like Denzel, Sean Penn. They're interesting. At Joaquin. Yeah. They're interesting. But like there's a code to it. They'll be like, let me tell you. There's a lot of like. What? Yeah. You know, like it's yeah, like, yeah, it's like yeah. interesting. And, and they'll be like, yeah, but. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I always call it cigarette acting. That's it. Yeah, not like yeah. what's his name in that movie Drive? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Gosling. Gosling with the, it's it's always dangling and you become obs- or maestro and yeah. you're obsessed yeah. with the cigarette dangling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the yeah, inhale yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. He, he inhales and talks and you go, is the smoke gonna no, come out? It's Ed Harris and Glenn Gary Glenn Ross where he goes, uh, That's absolutely right. Yeah. <laughs> they know what they're doing. <laughs> yes, yes. Nick Kroll has a great bit about eating chips in the seventies. Uh huh. <laughs> like he's like, like he, he, I can't do it, but it, it's just like I call it interesting acting. And if it works, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. But if it doesn't, there's a couple guys I won't name that I'm doing it, that I see them doing it. Yeah. Brad Pitt is the king of interesting acting. Right. Like he's eating and he's like, okay. what do you, like he looks at the apple. Yeah. But if it's not real. No. Well, it sucks. I mean, that's, I went to acting school for two years, the neighborhood playhouse in New York, San, uh, Sanford Meisner school, which is where yeah. Pacino went and, uh, that's De Niro where I and is this a video podcast or will people think I'm really here? That's where I was with Greg Fitzsimmons. I learned a lot from Greg. And then I thought I'm gonna get real old and blow my load up a lady and be a dad. I want to be a dad when I'm 90. I wanna die. Oh no, too dark. That's good. Too dark. I'm gonna die. That's good. I didn't know you did a Pacino. Oh yeah. That's good. I can't believe we've known all, all these years. Well, I can do, um, look at me, the bad guy. Say oh. goodbye to the bad guy. Yeah, Scarface. Yeah, Scarface. That was- I was doing Scarface. That was a great time. Really great time. It's not that, it's not that different from Trump. All the greats. Yeah. All the greats kind of talk in the front. Now I, I'm bl- blurring it, but Greg Fitzsimmons, great guy. Yeah. Great guy. He's got, he's got a bald head. He's shaving it closer now. He shaves it close. Next time I see him, there's going to be a shine on it. <laughs> gonna be able to see that shine gloss it up look at it check my own hair and his hair where his hair should be he doesn't need it still sexy wow he's still there sexy. it is yeah yeah you I found it, into it, it by the, the end. end by the end yeah doesn't need it still sexy uh, it, there's yeah. a little bit of a shh like yeah a slur that he does and it's a closed nose yeah these are the fun things with impressions it's like how open is the nose right and trump is actually kind of closed yeah it closed it's like a nerd voice yeah. I'm a nerd I'm not a jock I'm not a jock I'm a nerd it all <laughs> happens up at the front of the mouth it's all here baby yeah, yeah, yeah. and Mark Wahlberg Mark Wahlberg's like hey what are you guys doing <laughs> it's not my bad I saw someone else do a Wahlberg impression and they pointed out it's not my observation yeah. but he's always out of breath he's all like right. where are you guys going <laughs> what's up you guys want to work out <laughs> me and Donnie opened up a, we opened up a Wahlberg's <laughs> So it's not closed at all. It's yeah, completely open. Right, right. These are the valves. Yeah. And Ray, completely closed. Close it. Yeah. Close it. Right. All the way. Uh-huh. John C. Riley, kind of close. You know, I can't yeah. do John C. Riley, but same right, mechanism. Right. Yeah. This is my master class. Only difference, you're not learning anything and it's free. So many. <laughs> This is free. <laughs> this you is free. You put this one behind a paywall and just put say, you're going to learn shit in this one. You're going to learn how to do it, Trump. Put it behind a paywall. <laughs> if you want the premium, if you want an NFT trading card of me and Ed Harris, the comedian, he's got kind eyes, but he'll kill you with a pen. It's the joke I made on the way in. Good enough for the lobby, good enough for the show. Ed Harris, I'll take. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I get like, oh, who did somebody call me the other day? Oh. This is Harris. Look at you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Keeping it tight. Keeping it keeping it specific. Yeah. That's Ed. Yeah. There it is. Right there. I don't even <laughs> like it. It's so Ed. It's kind of scary. Ed don't do no comedy. No. Ed Harris don't do no comedy. Does he not do comedy? Name an Ed Harris comedy. Uh you got the memory of a fucking fly. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh Glenn Gary. Right. With Jack. Uh, 2306, please. That's Jack Lemon. Is that Jack Lemon? When I seduce my wife, I have a bit about this. When I try to seduce my wife, I really do this. And you'll know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. Uh, when I'm, well, Val and I will be watching TV. I go, sex. It, it is a bit. I go, sex in your 40s is different. Val knows it's coming. Yeah. Step one, I pause the TV. Yeah. Something's up. Right. <laughs> have you moved in close at this point? We're already close. Yeah. We're closeies. I'll pause it. That's either I want to order food or, <laughs> or, order, or, sex, Val. Yeah. or order Val. <laughs> Postmate. <laughs> and I always tip. And she always delivers. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it at the doorstep. 
<laughs> that doesn't even make sense. It's just no, another it's thing. It's just another thing. Just another thing. Twenty percent off this week with the, if you get the promo code. <laughs> priority. She always gives me priority. There's, look, we're too old for this. Meaning, we're too tired. Yeah, we can't do it. Um, but I, I say to her in the voice of Jack Lemon. I, I, in truth, I've only done this two or three times. But I go, you've awoken in me a primal urge. <laughs> That's, That's what I nice. say. That's, we start with a bit. I like Sex that. is so serious. Yes. Start with a bit. I know. You've awoken in me a primal urge. <laughs> And then the third one is I've never seen How it. long does the bit go on though? Uh-oh. Is it just is that just the entry into the The bit ends sex? once once I don't do bits during. Yeah. The bit is my naked body at you're, that you're, point. <laughs> you need a laugh just look to the south. That uh, that'll that'll lighten the mood. It is an interesting body cuz it's my tall. Body? Yeah, it's tall. Now, what's going on with my body is a is a is a whole podcast. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's uh it's so close to being in shape. Because you eat well. so funny. You just... Can I say, why aren't I in better shape? Right. You walk a lot, right? No, I exercise. I eat pretty well. Yeah. It's like, um, what is it? It's got to be something emotional. It's like my body is, doesn't trust. It doesn't <laughs> trust being yeah. skinny or having yeah, muscles. Yeah. It's like, no. Yeah. That, you won't be funny or right, something. Right, right, right. So it's like, out of love. Cause I am, I'm out here. Yeah. I'm out here trying. What's your exercise? Well, I've been exercising m way, way more. And you know, I, I've been, this is so boring, but it's almost over. I fast two days a week now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I can 24 eat, hours? But it's um, a fast mimicking diet. This is almost yeah. over. Most of the listeners are, are so bored. Three of you are like, I need something new. Yeah, yeah. And five of them are in the mirror right now trying to do the uh, Ed Harris impression. <laughs> <laughs> um, a fast mimicking diet is they realize that if you eat a quarter of your calories two days a week, so a quarter of my, my calorie intake is around 800 calories, but I do 600. Okay. For the day. Yeah. And what's crazy is I was actually pretty soft coming out of the pandemic. And then I did that for seven weeks, and I think I lost thirty pounds. Wow! And it's f it it works for me. Yeah, I'm one of those real addict motherfuckers that if you right. just tell me you're not eating today, I'll go okay. Right. But if you go like try to eat healthy, I'll be like all right. It's vague. And like, it's vague. It's too vague. Yeah. It's like drinking. Right. Stop drinking. Yeah. And I'm like okay. Yeah. I can't be like stop drinking after three drinks. Uh -huh. You're like who the fuck. You just call me a pussy yeah. or whatever it is. <laughs> Add a glass of water after each drink. Yeah. Uh, Who are these yeah, fucking lunatics yeah, right, out right. there with a spreadsheet of their drunkenness? Yeah, yeah. Do a shot, <laughs> then a beer, <laughs> then a water, <laughs> then take a walk. Look at the sun for five minutes, then have another shot. You're not like me. You, what wakes up when I drink isn't what wakes up when you drink. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a fucking Viking. Oh, dude, tell me about it. Right? I wish to God I could still drink. I miss it so much. It's fun. But I was the guy who started with a beer with everybody, yeah. did shots with everybody, yeah. and then everybody else stopped, and I would be alone in my apartment doing shots to go to bed. Greg, you just, I, I mean, I was there for all of that. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to answer because that was me. I would leave a show. I used to have a joke where I was like, I like drinking alone. Fewer people to apologize to. Yeah, that's good. And that's that's what it was. All right. And what it is is like, it was like a secret thing. Like I wanted to go home. I'd leave a show where the drinks were free. Yeah. And I'm like, why would I want these people to see me right. being like, I like your fucking face. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm not gay. I just, <laughs> I would, I <laughs> I'd kiss you on the lips. <laughs> Why would I want to show yeah, that yeah. to people I work with and right. know? No. Just, I'd go home and watch a movie, and I don't miss it. I'm not trying to one-up you. I'm just like, I'm better Why, are without... you dry? I'm dry. I've been dry uh, for... Dry. As opposed to wet? <laughs> well, I mean, there's California dry. Yeah, yeah, California sober. Which is you can still smoke pot, but you don't drink. Well, I'm a fucking mess. Let's just talk about booze. Cause okay. I'm out here smoking five MEO DMT, so I'm not exactly yeah. completely sober. Right. Uh, but I don't consider that to be a drug. That is uh that is a uh, DMT, really? 
five meo dmt different from nnd oh, don't you okay. love how drug people are like chemists oh i love it they the, have like periodic tables like some yeah. fucking guy named skis in the valley is like well actually <laughs> the activating atom right. is uh, nn dmt which right. is a complete it's actually water soluble yeah and we're gonna use intramuscular uh to get the dose to yeah fucking and you skis. know and you know the reason you use the water pipe is because the enzymes at a yeah. certain level yeah. will emit and it's like Aren't you supposed to be at Starbucks working? Yeah. Fuck. Yes. I forgot. And you just want to go, you like getting high. Shut the fuck <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. This isn't MIT. Right. But it's also fun. I'm one of those people. But anyway, I, I, don't, I don't know what you call it. New Mexico sober? <laughs> I don't know what I am. <laughs> I don't know what I am. <laughs> but I don't drink anymore. It's been over seven years. It, it's exactly- Seven I, years? I quit drinking the week I got married. Wait a minute. Yeah. When when we- so was that in the middle of crashing? It was season two, going into season two. No of crashing. shit. Yeah. yeah. Damn. And I want to plug it because Annie Grace wrote this book. Annie Grace. Annie Grace wrote a great book. <laughs> Sounded like a funny Annie Grace wonderful book. Yeah. It's called This Naked Mind. It'll get you off the sauce. <laughs> I read it. I actually listened to it. Yeah. I was just thinking about it because it's one of those things that like I can't say it would work for anybody, but if you want it. Val and I were just having, the, she drove me here. We were talking about like how you need to want something. And if you really do want it, and I did, I wanted to make a change. Yeah. It'll, it'll help you. It's one of those sneaky books that it's like, yeah. hi, welcome to the book. We're not going to quit drinking. We're not. We're going to, we're just going to take a look at it. Just sit down. We're just going to, uh, we're just going to sit down. Yeah. Let's just take a look at it. Yeah. Don't you like it? It's fun, right? It's fun. Uh, and then it slowly breaks down step by step what i needed which is not alcohol is bad alcohol is killing you right it's actually it's way sexier to be like you've been had yeah that's what you like that yeah oh if you make me feel like a fool yeah i'll change right if you go like the alcohol company this is what alcohol actually does this is what they say it does uh -huh. this is what how they market it and this is what it, this is what it does to your body this is what they say it does and this is what you think it does and this is what it actually yeah. does right. and you go like oh i was i was just sold a lie yeah it's freedom it's masculinity it's oh fucking... the commercials where you are but, your yeah. best self you're not your best self and the television mad men was one of is one of my favorite tv shows but i used to drink and watch it yeah i was like i'm a king i remember you, you just shit your pants theater <laughs> you just shit. i'm like donnie <laughs> draper there's chinese food on yeah, my face yeah. i'm like this guy <laughs> The human animal is so fucking dumb. Yeah. We love watching an alpha on a show, drinking a poison. I'm just I'm just saying alpha. Smoking a, a cigarette. Poison, smoking a cigarette, a poison, and having no effect. Right. And we're so simple simple. Did you know if you give photographs of silverback gorillas to gorillas, they'll look at them all day? We're the oh, really? same fucking thing. Yeah. They'll just a beautiful gorilla. They'll be like, uh, yeah, like no Instagram. Shit. It's fucking nuts. Wow. We are that. Yeah. So you give us John Hamm yeah. drinking and smoking, uh -huh. and then there I am covered in Cheeto dust, like I'm just like this guy. I jizz, <laughs> like I soft jizz, because <laughs> my body doesn't know what's happening. I'm not him. Look at look at what the porn that Mad Men is. He's always getting hit on. He's always ready to fuck. That dude would be 375 pounds. Yeah. He have bang. He'd be coughing all day. He wouldn't have a job because he he's job. drunk every day at lunch. And I don't care. They took a lot of license. They were like, "That's what it was like." Yeah. I'm sure it was. They got. I, look, I actually love that show. I, and I'll tell you this much: research. my mom was a uh, in a secretary pool. My mom was too. In a in a in a company just like that, she and she too. said it was like guys would you would go into their office to take notes. And there was one guy that he would call for a secretary and they would fight over whose turn it was to go in because he'd pull his cock out. Yeah. And he never got fired and nobody ever reported it. And everybody went to Ratazzi's was the was the bar restaurant near of it's the office. Ritazzi's. And they all well, I go to got Tazzy's. <laughs> First I take my dick out, then I go to Tazzy's. Sweetheart, let me grab your ass. It's a horrible time for most of the population. <laughs> But those that were winning were never winning quite so hard. Right. Mad Men the Musical. <laughs> Cigarette, no consequence. Hey! Gave my wife VD again. Hey! <laughs> Kids don't even know my name. That's, yeah. There's no on, parenting. You're on the 715 show. train yeah. back to Westchester. Right. They're long asleep. Right. And right. that was, 
That was actually probably the, I actually think it's horrible. Like it's, it's like they didn't even know they were sick. You know what I'm saying? But they, they believe that as long as you were providing, you were doing good. Oh yeah. I mean, my dad, you, as you know, I grew up in Tarrytown. You lived in Sleepy Hollow for a little while, which is a fucking great little suburb. You take a train into the city. It takes about a half an hour. Well, it's, ter- Sleepy Hollow is tricky. Tarrytown's the express stop. Oh, and Sleepy Hollow, you, you gotta one get the step. local. Yeah. Yeah, it was rough. That one's like 40 minutes. Yeah, it was rough. But my dad would uh, take the train. He worked in radio, so he worked four hours a day. So he'd take the train in. He had the f- 11 to 3 p.m was his job. Wow. So he would get up late and he would take the train in and then he'd do his show and then we'd go to the Friars Club where he would cocktail and play poker for hours. Using cocktail as a verb for like drink? Oh yeah. That's great. And then- Never stop doing that. My dad would go there, hit cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would go in, hit cocktail. He'd sit down and play some cards. Next thing you know, he's on stage, he's roasting Buddy Hackett. And Buddy would let him do it. And cocktail a little more. Next thing you know, he's back in Terrytown. Yeah. Give him my mom what for. Yeah, throwing a move on the wife. Throwing a move. <laughs> God damn, they still loved each other. How do you do it, Dad? You start crying. How do you do it? <laughs> it's the only way Irish people can show emotion is while screaming and smoking. You are everything to me. <laughs> you see it? <laughs> Why'd you do it, Dad? Why'd you do it? It's Al again. Uh, go on. But then, you know, and then, he, then he'd life. go to Ritazzi's. He, he was oh, friends he also with, went to Ritazzi's. Was friends with Dick Ritazzi and eventually bought his uh, winter house in Florida. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, came home. If he came home for dinner, he, was, he, he had a few in him. Lit. And then uh, went into the den with his three-pack-a-day habit and was sat in the den with the door closed and read the paper and smoked. And th- there was no, like, I, I, I homework, like, check. It. My parents didn't check on my homework literally once in my entire life. Of course not. I don't think my parents knew I had homework. Yeah. There was no, this, I mean, one of the reasons why this is such a fertile comedy premise is because this is what comedy is for. Is yeah. to be like, out, while you were talking, I was like, and I love my life. I have no complaints. But if I want an hour to answer emails, the negotiation of that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like Val and I have to coordinate. I'm not yeah. saying, this isn't my wife is a task, man. I'm no, just like, it's a different world. I'm involved in my wife's life. I'm involved in my daughter's life and I wouldn't change it for the world. And if you knew how hard it is for me to just carve out two hours to literally write a movie for myself to star in. Yeah. yeah. Like I go, you know, this, I don't want this to sound condescending. I sometimes envy, I look at like my brother-in-law, he goes into work 8 a.m., 9 a.m., I don't know, fucking normal time. He goes into the normal time and he's there till five. I'm like, imagine, wow. <laughs> if yeah. you just like, I pick my daughter up from school every day at 2.30. Yeah. <laughs> I get till 2.30. Great right. problem to have. Right. Right. But I'm like, it's really hard there to, used to be a find shit. time to work. There was a song in the 70s. Different times. That was, it went, my baby, this is a woman singing it. My baby takes, takes the, morning, the train. morning train. He, he works, works from nine till five. And then he takes another home again. To find me waiting for him. You know who wrote that? Who? A fucking guy. <laughs> and he was like, the best part, we'll have a broad sing it. <laughs> then all the other broads will go, this broad's my kind of broad. Yeah. Then we're out at Finazzi's having a cocktail. <laughs> we're out cocktailing. <laughs> yeah, then I we go to the I put den. on a little perfume and I do shop my little yeah. hole. I always know my place. <laughs> what? She's in the studio. <laughs> what? It's fine. We got it. We're going to cut out where you say what, but we got it. Take my name off. No. And your name is Dolly McGrab my butt. That's your name now. You know, when Val was in labor, I made her laugh so hard. She was listening to Beyonce. And there's that lyric where it's, she goes, it took 45 minutes to get all dressed up. Yeah. You know that lyric? 
I was like, that's how you know an old Jewish guy wrote Beyonce's songs. Hey. You ever see who writes her songs? Like it's like 35 people. Yeah. And, and they're these like super old Jewish songwriters. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's the tell. Because he's like, how long, how long does it take Beyonce to get ready? 45? Yeah. 45 minutes? Right. Are you fucking nuts? Yeah. Are she you wait, fucking She wakes nuts? up and starts putting it on. Yeah. yeah. It takes the clerk at Rite Aid 45 <laughs> minutes to get all dressed up. This is Beyonce. <laughs> Look at her from tip to tail and, yeah. and, and tally the time. Look at her from tip to tail and tally the time. It's like a theater exercise. That's tw that's two hours. Uh, yeah. Ask Jay. Yeah. Look at how tired Jay-Z looks. Yeah. You think he's waiting 45 minutes for no, her to get all dressed up? No. No, that's two hours plus. Oh. Two hours plus. He's wearing an X -X XXL white baggy tee. He's ready to go. She's in the, she's in the she's in the bathroom bigger than my house. Everything's marble. <laughs> She's putting something in her hair. I don't know. These are different products for different kinds of people. <laughs> She's got lotions and potions. <laughs> She's exactly. like a witch. <laughs> <laughs> different different style. Jay-Z. I'm sorry. How long does it take Val to get ready to go out? I have no notes. No. The best answer I can give is I don't even know. Yeah. It's never it just been an happens, issue. Right? I've never been like, what the fuck? Oh, my God. My wife, literally, I have to tell her. You're not wearing that sweater out. Because, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, it's just she'll wear like a raggedy old. Hilarious, and, but I'd rather have it that way. Yeah, than the other way. Well, it it helps if you know um, she accepts herself. I think that's. I mean, does Beyonce ultimately accept herself? I don't think anyone that's dancing, literally dancing, that hard. Yeah. Feels really great. About no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. That's a hot take. No. Maybe you can only dance that hard if you feel great about yourself. I don't know. I think it's a combination of feeling, feeling that you are super capable and super talented, but also after all these years, still feeling like if you're not number one, you will die. Here's my concern. This is what I think we're really talking about. Is someone whispering in her ear? You're losing it. Yeah. Like is someone keeping her hungry? Because right. because one of the great fascinations of, of my show business life is why more people don't even try to get out a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm obsessed with that. I'm it Well, then welcome to the feast. Because yeah. here we are. There's grapes. There's cheese. <laughs> there's so much to eat, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm haunted by the friends I know. Not, not like close friends, but people we know in the business that make over a mil a weekend. Mm -hmm. and they're as stressed as as an open micer mm -hmm. they're as stressed as an open micer trying to make it yeah. just get a little bit of cred and they're they're making 52 million a year and i hear about them worried that the back row of the arena yeah is, is isn't sold, out. sold. Yeah, i'm yeah. not kidding yeah like they literally know the ticket count for the arena i'm over here going what's What's the fucking point, huh? Yeah. I got to butt heads with you. It's yeah. from Glenn Gary Glenn Rose. Uh, <laughs> but what's the fucking point? Yeah. I don't get it. Look, I'm on my high horse. Just give me a second. Who is out here trying to master the art of a, of a beautiful, fulfilling, balanced life? Yeah. Almost nobody. Right. That's my answer is almost nobody. Yeah. And when I find somebody like you that's interested in that as a topic, mm. You know, everybody's different. For me, like it has to do with how much you're performing, how much you're touring, whatever it is. But getting those numbers right, there's so much. And, you know, I'm about I'm turning 45 this month and I'm really starting to notice that, like, it's finally taking root that I'm like, not what can you do, not even what should you do, but like, what do you want to do? And like mm -hmm. when you follow that, the rewards are so much more genuine and real and rewarding. I also think you're in <clears throat> gear more. You know, you're, you're, yes. because you're my, if I have one regret in my career, I hate even using that word career. Um, it's that I, is that what you meant career? Yeah. I just, I mean, I feel like I went after too many directions at once. And a lot of it was because it came from fear, fear of what's that phrase when you don't think you're going to have enough. Deficit depravity. mentality, depravity, yeah. whatever, not depravity. De um, not that I am depraved as there's well. There's an abundance mindset and there's a depravity mindset. Is that what it I is? I think it is. Depravity, okay. Yeah. I like Oh, feet. scarcity? Scarcity. That's what yeah. it is. Um, and I feel like it kept me from putting my energy into places that 
I am more connected to and I'm more passionate about and I get more joy from. And, uh, and I think that if you create a space in your life, it will fill up. And I think you're a good example of that. You know, you don't go after everything yeah. and then things kind of, they, you, you focus, all your energy goes into one thing and and you got to give space, put space around things. And I, I mean, I don't know. Val and I, we were literally just talking about it. It's like people, people just have different values. It's okay. Not everybody has to be like me. I'm glad people, not everybody is like me. Yeah. But I don't see a lot of people, I'll, I'll take stand up as a good example. As I'm like, I look at my comedy as a cactus. I want to water it as little as possible. Uh-huh. That doesn't mean I neglect it. Yeah. But I know two sets a week keeps me in the, in the, what, what is the word? I guess you could just say keeps me in the good spot. Mm hmm. To, like if I go up, the re- this is what I'm saying. The rewards of going up five times a week versus two times a week, I'm saying it's like this much li- difference, m- right. more improvement. Right. And then, but the difference in my home life is is yeah immeasurable. Yes. Also yes. in my sanity. Yeah. So like, and when you start, you need to be out six nights absolutely. a week. Absolutely. But you don't need to after you've been doing it for 25 years. And this is the thing, the, the, the level of consciousness, I'm not talking about psychic or spiritual or anything. I'm just mean the level of your thinking that gets you success is not the level of thinking that helps you enjoy your success. Mm -hmm. And I don't see a lot of people making that really transitioning. So they're like trying to stay hungry. They're trying to stay depraved, depravity mindset. They're trying to stay scarce. Yeah. They're trying to stay angry, trying to stay broken. And I'm just like, I don't think I don't think you have to, but we don't have a lot of models of people that are going like. Val and I say this all the time: it, it, is good life when? Good life when? Yeah. When the fuck are you like? Right. How many fucking movies do you have to see where some guy is, uh, you know, either literally or metaphorically on a deathbed, being like, Argh! nobody goes, I should have done more yeah. weekends. Yeah, yeah. Eat fucking right. shit, right. dude. Or you sell your house and you spend. 20 grand redoing the landscaping and uh, sanding the floors. And then you go, why the fuck didn't we do this for ourselves while we were living here? You're right from my own soul with that. Yeah. It's like I lived with people that would, if the house was starting to look really nice, it's because we were going to sell it. Yeah. And I was like, but we lived here. Yeah. <laughs> right. That, you will do so much more for something else, do it for you. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to turn this into my podcast. (laughs) Self-help, we chart in self-help and comedy. That's true. But who cares, it's what I do. It's what I like to talk about. It's like renovate the house for you. Yes. And it's a self-love issue. We just did it. We did it last year. We just looked around and we were like, you know, because both kids were in college and it was like, there there was a little worry about scarcity. Yeah. But then they're fucking, One's out, the other one counts all set. And we just kind of looked around and went, let's fucking throw money at the house and enjoy. And I swear to God, every time I walk in the door now, I'm so happy. Not that material things make you happy, but it's a symbol of the investment we put yeah. in ourselves. Yes. It's taking, like, that is, can be a reminder that you care about yourself and you love yourself and you love your wife and you love your space. Yeah. Your relationship. I also just meant it metaphorically. It's like, if you are at a place, who's who's Beyonce whispering in your ear, like, make hay while the sun's out? Yeah. How much hay do you need? Yeah. Nobody's asking how much is enough. Yeah. How much is enough? Uh, Douglas Soy, uh, T S O I, he he runs a kind of like a mindful financial advising thing, and his whole thing is how much is enough. Nobody's asking how much is enough of anything. Yeah. Stand up recognition action juice mm-hmm. and then we just get hooked and right. then it's just addicts right going at it mm-hmm. i'm like Ugh. I don't no know. i when i take my inventory it's friendships how are my friendships i feel fucking rich yeah with, i i go jesus christ the measure of I a need? man you only count his friends it's true is that a song it's from uh, the muppet version of a christmas <laughs> carol <laughs> which is a it. great movie i love it and michael caine who takes it dead serious yeah what was that kermit He's like yeah. in it. Wow. Acting with a Kermit. Uh-huh. Fucking killing it. Yeah. And there's a line where he goes, if you want to take the measure of a man, you need only count as friends. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt with a stupid song. No, I'm just saying like I, you know, there are moments where there's a comedy festival and I say to my agent, I'd like to go to that and they're not interested. And I, re- I go down a fucking, and then I pull out of it and I go, 
I'm fucking, I'm going to a dinner party at the next door neighbor's house and then we're gonna play beach volleyball on Sunday yeah. with all my friends that I've done for 15 years. Stop it. You know? There's a great documentary, great documentary. It's called <laughs> Happy. I watch it. Oh, it's based on that uh, Harvard class, isn't it? It might be. Yeah, the author is a Harvard professor. Harvard, great schools. That I wanted to go, didn't have time. <laughs> Went to Trump University instead. They said it's a better degree. <laughs> They said it's worth two Harvards, two and a half Harvards. He's making it up as he goes, it's worth 14 Harvards. 14 Harvards and half a Yale. One semester at Trump University. He's like fading out. One semester at Trump University. Trump on his deathbed. I was the greatest president. <laughs> Slowly fading away. Um, what were they saying? Oh, happy. It might be the Harvard guy. But we watch it all the time, and some of the happiest people in the world, they, they have a lot of things in common, and you just mentioned one of them is like having dinner with friends, volleyball. Every Sunday, you know, we moved out of the city. We live in a small town. And every Sunday, we just have six friends over, people with kids. Nice. Uh, it's like a blood transfusion. Mm -hmm. Val has been showing me how to be a friend. Neil Brennan has this great thing about comedians. He's like, there are no friends. He's being a little more cynical than I would yeah. be. He's like, there are no friends. You're just in a bar fight, and occasionally you're punching in the same direction. And you wow. get the illusion of a team. Damn. But as soon as like someone hits you with a chair, that that guy's he's not on your team. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was me for a long time. I, I'm not saying I was a scoundrel. I'm saying the whole thing was was that way. It was very alliances more than true friendships. Mm-hmm. Some true friendships, I'm not as cynical in that regard, but but also just a lot of that. And now I just have friends that like, it, it took me a while to get used to. It's like, we never talk about how to scheme and plot to take over show business. Uh -huh. I never say like, that's a bit. I yeah. never say like, uh, that's a movie, like we should whiteboard that. Yeah. And it's really nice. And we joke that I'm like uh, the, the big hairy guy in Labyrinth. I'm always going, friend? Like I don't get it, but like, the keys to happiness, really interesting. One of them is is belonging to a, a community and right. a community that doesn't want anything from you. Right. And a community that likes me, you know, like if I stopped having any sort of juice in show business, none of these people would even know about that. Mm -hmm. Like when Leela was born, I remember thinking, wow, she's a baby. And I said to Val, this is an embarrassing thought, but I was like, what if I'm not relevant I really said famous. What if I'm not famous when she's 16? Yeah. When it might be cool that her dad is a comedian. And Val goes, you'll be her dad. Yeah. And this is like what I've been having to drive into my mind. So in the movie, uh, Happy. Can I just say one thing? Squarespace.com <laughs> slash Ed Harris. If you're having erectile dysfunction. Chew on Viagra that you get from a company that makes it into a Skittle. It's a beautiful Skittle. You buy it, you chew it, you have sex. Who Blue is Chew. Blue Chew. And you, when you walk in and you see the wife and you stick your tongue out, she knows what's coming. She knows what's coming. And then you go on and you do alphasportsbet.net. You lose your mortgage. Bet it on the Rams. Bet it on the Rams with an erection from Blue Chew. Use the erection to place the bet. Then you'll definitely win. Who is this? This isn't even Trump anymore. <laughs> Turn to a British guy for a second there. It's Michael Caine. It's John bit. Gilgood. <laughs> but as long as you're doing this, it's still Trump. I do shockers with both hands. Shockers. I let the Dems know that I'm going to shock them. I'm going to shock them. It's two in the pink, one in the stink. That's what I say. Yeah, that's what you do. So anyway, <laughs> this is why we can't be friends as comedians, because I'm trying to tell you a very poignant, yes. deep thing. And yet, <laughs> poignant, good word, great word. It's got a G, I knew that. Um, <laughs> poignant. One of, the, one of the most confusing, disorienting moments of my life is the first time my son saw me do stand-up comedy, and he was about 16 or 17. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure he'd seen little clips online, but he'd never seen me in a, in a showroom. So I'm in Denver. Whole family comes out because we're going to take a ski vacation after I do my three nights you in waited the Denver for comedy, comedy Works. Works. Yeah. If my boy is going to see me, he's going to see me do well. The, yeah. The you hottest... didn't bring him to Orlando. No, I did not. <laughs> didn't say, let's go to Disney. <laughs> you can watch Dad do okay in Orlando. <laughs> And then we'll go to Disney. No, you said you, you can slide down a mountain on chopsticks. 
but you're going to watch Daddy Kill. <laughs> Who is this guy? It's like you, Robin Williams. You fucking uh-huh. kill at the Denver Comedy Works. Oh, yeah. So he comes in, and the waitress sets him up at a table and is bringing him sodas and bringing him chicken wings, and he's can't believe the room is packed, and so there's a buzz, yep. and there's some comics that go up that are good, but... They're, and he's loving them. He thinks they're amazing. Yeah. And then dad comes up and blows the fucking roof. I mean, if there was ever, you know, when there's sometimes when there's somebody in the audience that means a lot to you, oh, yeah. you pull shit out of yourself you didn't even know was there. I still Those do are your it for best Val, sets. but especially the first couple times, Val song. Yeah. You're like. So he's in the audience and I destroy and we walk out and we go to get a slice of pizza and he goes, that's the funniest hour I've ever seen in my life. He goes, that was a, and there was a part of him that was in awe of me that put a giant chasm between us. Whoa. And it made me sad. <gasps> Wait. Because he was acting like a fan. No. And I want him to love me for being his father. Yeah. And I don't want him to adore me. Et tu, Brute. Yeah. You went. I don't want it to work on you. Right. I want you to go, I've seen your balls in the shower. <laughs> you changed my poopy, poopy butt. <laughs> Not, that was a killer callback. <laughs> Does anything make you want to puke more than your son being like, that opener was oh, tight. Did you my riff God. that? Yeah. Hey, can oh, I wow. open for you? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No. So keep that in mind. I think yeah. that the part of me, like you know, because I would say at this point in my career, I'm 57. I'm I'm working steady as ever. Things are going great. But also, I used to host a show on MTV. I used to, you know, do Letterman once a, every six months. And yeah. and there was a time when I felt more like the center of things. It's so much better to raise your kids when you're not in that space. Yeah. And it's not that. I like, you know, tap the brakes in my no, it career. Just it, it just, just happened it just because happens. my focus was on them as much as my career. Yeah. And I think it was a really good balance of not, my, my father was kind of a huge celebrity in New York city. Mm. Like everybody knew him. We couldn't go to a restaurant with, and it was intimidating. And it, it made me, uh, a distance between you. it did. And it made me feel like I'll never be that good. I'll never be that important. I don't want, so why try? Which explains so much. <laughs> Where, which camera are you looking at? All three are my close. <laughs> and we got this little sneaky son of a bitch over That's here. That's right. At Look at that one doing the candid. <laughs> uh, no, that's really interesting. I, it made me think of nine things, but then me looking at the camera is really Like how out. many really famous people are great parents? Name one. All right. Well, it's tricky. It's a tricky pickle. Yeah. I will say, and this, well, it's going to sound like I'm kissing his ass. I think Judd Apatow is a, is a, he great, is. Is a great He is. He definitely is. And I get right. the feeling that Sandler is. I think so. I can't know. That's the, what we're really talking about is, can you know? You can't know. You can't know. No. Phil but, Rosenthal. I just hung out Phil, with him. He's Philly a great boy. father. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. Well, you can see that in his eyes. Yeah, right. You don't see the like, they should stop feeding Phil and Phil should feed his fucking kids. <laughs> Hey, hey, Greg. Hey, you want some? I've never tried to do Phil before. Hey. And then. Hey. He's like a Muppet and the guy's hand is tired. Oh, oh, sorry. Hey, you know why they feed him? His mouth's always open. Guy's in constant state of wonder. If you don't uh, get these riffs, he look was them just up. on the show. He's the king. Yeah, he was just on. He was gonna do my pod ago. today. Yeah, but we had to oh, really? move him because uh, we had a guest in from out of town that could only do. Who's today. that? God, I'm so here. That's how present I am. Wow, I'm so present. Enlightened <laughs> Trump. I'm so present. The moment is all we ever have. Time is a construct. It's a way that we make sense of the distance between two things that happen. But really, it's just a concept in the mind. God is right here. It's eternal. <laughs> If he did that, he would win the election. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They, they, there's one thing Latin. America loves is when a politician is evil and then they show any humanity whatsoever. Wow. You look You look at, um, uh, who's the guy I'm thinking of? Who's the guy that turned on Trump? 
Mitt Romney? No, Mitt's still a piece of shit. Is he? Oh, my. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Mitch McConnell. Yeah, Mitt Romney. Yeah. 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 Suddenly he was great. Even G.W. Bush, who started Al Qaeda, who created yeah. Al Qaeda, yeah. is now seen as a sweet, lovable guy. No, I know. It's uh, an NWA is like I hear it at the dentist. You know, right. the times they are a change it. Yeah. Straight out of Compton. <laughs> People used to cl- clutch their pearls when they heard that, or, or cinch their robes. Yeah, yeah. They were terrified. Right. And now it's like. Oh, the one where Paul Giamatti's their delightful little manager. <laughs> Things are crazy. Yeah. It's uh but it's cool. It's it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Who cares fine. what I think? Yeah. What was I saying? Oh, the movie Happy. Yeah. The some of the happiest people in the world. No surprise it's in like Sweden or some fucking Switzerland. Finland just came out as number 1. Finland. But one of the reasons is the low income. So it's it's they don't have a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh and they live in these very well-kept Low income. I don't. Even, I don't think they're called low income housing. It's just a house. Yeah. And it's sort of. You know, this isn't literally true, but you'll get what I'm saying. It's sort of shaped like an asterisk, meaning like there's bedrooms, and in the middle there's this big meeting area. Mm-hmm. And in the meeting area, there's the there's the common area. So you're you're never watching a movie alone. You read a book. Somebody's nearby. Everybody cooks every night. They all cook together. Mm-hmm. They all clean up together. These are not famous people. These are not rich people. Mm -hmm. These aren't people with like all the things that we've been told that will make us happy. Right. Exclusive access, Mm -hmm. uh, some sort of United premiere or a VIP lounge, or like you get to sit in the big red chair at the premiere of some movie that isn't even out yet. I'm here to tell you that 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 does not work. None of it works. One of the things that for sure works. And it's one of the reasons why I don't mind speaking frankly about my I have a special life and I don't mind talking about it because the people listening have an even better shot. Get a group together. Mm -hmm. If you have a trivia night or a cooking night or a movie night or uh, it doesn't matter. It's like happiness isn't God. Thank God. It's not for Jared Leto. Right. It's not. Oh, he gets to be happy. Eat fucking shit. Have a game night. Right. Have a barbershop. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have a church. Have, a, have an AA meeting. Mm-hmm. This is like, those are connected, happy people. It's not, but don't get me started. Now, no, I now think I'll it, really turn it into my podcast if we start getting I've into always, spiritual like, fulfillment. I'm amazing. I'm a, like, I live in Venice because there's no fences like between people's houses. It's house, 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 house. We're going to build a fence. And our kids. <laughs> We're going to put a fence around the Fitzsimmons house. <laughs> And Greg is going to pay for it. And his gar- his garden is never going to be able to get in because he's Mexican. And so people's kids, dogs, everything roams and flows. And you literally walk in and out of people's houses. No, I remember. Oh, you, you were there? I was at your house. Oh, I, I remember at one point you, is your house better than mine now? Because your oh, last yeah. house, you didn't think I was. <laughs> oh, my house fucked your house. Really? Out, dude. No. My house would embarrass your house. Really? <laughs> My no, house, does my no. house, fit in your house? No, no, no. It's yeah. not like that. Yeah. Maybe it does, but uh, no, no. Don't be stupid. My, it would definitely fit in my house. <laughs> the guy who's saying all the things yeah, that you yeah, would say yeah. to say, oh no, no, no. Yeah, absolutely, it would fit in my garage. But yeah, go. Uh, but no, no. Great house. You have a great house. <laughs> no, no. We we got a nice. Our 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 new house is nice. It was an upgrade, I guess yeah. you would say. And you got a land. Got a little land. That's nice. And I, you know what I do? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to share. See, this, this is going back to some of the best things in life, being free. I, I, I had this re- revelation recently, and it really is a revelation, talking about happiness. Something I heard Tony Robbins talking about. I don't know how people feel about Tony. I, I love Tony Robbins, but I don't know if he's corny or something. He was talking about like sleep and food don't give you energy. He's like purpose gives you energy. Yeah. And, and he's like, that. don't you know this? Like Thanksgiving, you overeat. Do you feel energized? He's like, you, you ever sleep so much you're tired? And and I, I was really falling into a rut. Not a, not a bad rut, but just kind of like an unexamined aspect of my life, which is I was like, you always sleep until the last possible moment. Yeah. <laughs> like if you have to do this podcast at 10 a.m., you sleep till 8.58 yeah. and get up shower and go right and now tell me if i don't sound like a grown man but it's meaning this seems like an older guy realization i get up talking about the land i get up 
five thirty in the morning, and I pop off the pillow because I really. You talked about uh, Greg that has walking around houses, so community Greg. Yeah, would call that or, or or like friend Greg or whatever. I've I've done some Tony Robbins stuff where I like map out what matters to me most. Okay, and what what people don't do, people don't do that. It's kind of going back to what we were saying about like you get the work thing and and you just fucking rock work hard more 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 like a like a corporation Mm -hmm. but it turns out like when you map it out what you really want in a fulfilled life there are all these different like areas and if you just map that out and get curious about it you're like ahead of 99 percent of the population because you're not unconscious about your intentions yeah so now so i i still like sleep but like once i was like well you know what my favorite thing that i do really I'd say it's tied with comedy, but I actually think it beats comedy. Meditation. It's similar to meditation. It's my version of meditation. It's. I. I like to get up. I. I like the first thing I do is I do cold, cold exposure. I love cold water. It gets me high. Then I get in the hot tub. I know you're gonna get a sense. And then I get in my humidor and I pick a cigar. (laughs) No. People always think it's so fancy that I have a cold plunge in a hot tub. It's not that fancy. Yeah. You too can have a hundred dollars a month or whatever it costs to buy a, a hot tub it's not that crazy yeah i have a hot tub yeah see okay but i i'm just I mean, saying. my house my house has a hot tub your house has a beautiful hot tub it would fit in my garage <laughs> um <laughs> uh, so i like this you wake your body up in the cold you get in the hot it's the best feeling you can have in the world yeah I call it the full body jizz yeah three to four minutes in cold get in the hot every every uh every every like uh what's it called corpuscle every artery every vein every, yeah. everything was um constricting because it's cold then it gets in the hot and it, and it expands. Yeah. So it literally is like you're jizzing for about five minutes. Nice. It's incredible. Yeah. And I get in the water. I did it this morning. The moon is out, full moon. I'm like a farmer. I know the moon. I know the movement of the stars. And I'm in this water and I'm like, ah, like nobody's there. Yeah. Just fucking jizzing. Uh-huh. Then I get out. I go inside uh, and I and I, I read my my books then the books that i like to read are spiritual books uh-huh and i do a meditation and then i and then i read my books and i'm stealing it that's you know, amazing the reason, you, the reason you get up the reason i'm happy to share this and it's not a brag is i'm trying to frankly i'm trying to inspire people because it would have inspired me to hear somebody say this it's like what do you really want and i promise if you really get honest about what is the most important what gives you the most juice in your life you'll realize that there's something that you actually like more than sleep. 